Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. Today I'm going to talk about ship's decanters, also known as uh, Rodney's, uh, named after Admiral Rodney. Um, and uh, I'll just give you a vague idea, this is a ship's decanter and it's designed not to fall over when it's on a ship. So, um, let me pull that down. so yeah, that's exactly what it is. They're from the originally from the late 18th century and it, it's become a kind of fashion thing now. So yeah, I, I probably only have one that was originally on a ship and all the rest of them I have are really um, a fashion item that's designed as a ship decanter. And also in some of my references, I'm gonna highlight some of the things that are kind of ship decanter-ish, but I wouldn't really count them as um, ship's decanters um, because I think they're just vaguely that shape. I did an early video on um, interwar conical decanters, which are kind of like more like this. Uh, and I don't count those as ship decanters, even though they're, they're conical. Usually ship ones are wider. Some of them are a bit of an odd shape, but yeah, that's the usual. So I'm gonna show you a couple of books that I have references in and, um, and you can have a good look at what they're like. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So here we go. The book I'm showing you here is The Decanter, an Illustrated History of Glass from 1650 by Andy McConnell. It shows you a lot of the early ones. It doesn't really have much in the way of later ship's decanters, but these ones were, I count these as real ones, in that they would have been made for a ship. Um, and yeah, they, they did get through a lot of booze on those ships, and the officers did need quite a few of these decanters. So um, I have one early one. It's a bit like this um cutting wise um, if i go over the page you can see there's more on this page these are a bit um not quite so wide it's also a bit like that and yeah a bit like this one so um yeah what i'll what i will do let me just go forward a bit more yeah there's some some more in here you can see they're just you're getting the idea of what's what's going on here with these. Um, what I will do is I'll show you my first one and then I'll show you my other reference. This is the um, first ship's decanter I'm going to show you. Um, it's a proper period one. It probably was on a ship, which accounts for why it's a bit beaten up in places. Let me show you something. Um, first thing that's wrong with it. Yeah, the stopper's short. Um... I'm not sure if it's a vision, it does seem to fit okay, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but it is shot. And um, I'll show you the decanter. It also has, I wouldn't say it's quite shot, but yeah, it's got some issues, let's say. So a couple of chips around the top. Um, if you think it was used on a ship that was rocking around and someone's trying to put the stopper in. Um, yeah, but look at the base. Let me show you something. Look at this base here. It's got a bit of dust scraped into it there, but look at, look at the wear on that. Masses of wear where it sits on the table. Yeah. Big pontal mark in the middle. And then it's got these which you see on a lot of early, I mean, I would date this sort of 1800 to, to 1820 kind of period with um, four cut rings. But they've been, they've been sort of like cut into faceted blade rings. It's quite cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's a big, good heavy lump. And on the ship, the table that they would be hung on would um, be suspended um, from the ceiling by a single rope so that as the ship rocked from side to side the table would kind of stay level. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the first one I'm going to show you. Um, really nice early one. And... Uh, even in that state, it still has some value. So if you see one that you think is an early one like this, um, yeah, even if it's a bit damaged, it still has value. I mean, a really nice one 
people are asking like eight, nine hundred pounds over a thousand, depending on what it's like. So um, yeah, these these are quite valuable things um, in in good condition. And I'm probably gonna get a new stopper for it. If you remember in the pictures that I was showing you, most of the ones had bullseye stoppers, and yeah, I, I want to make it usable. And um, I might get a bullseye in it. I think it'll look better, um, look a bit more impressive. And also, if I if I do have to trim this a little bit, a bullseye will look look better with it as well. Just to make it look good. Um, yeah, it 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 won't be right, but I'll be happy to use it. I, and I have actually used this, so yeah, it looks good on the table with port in it. So the next one I'm going to show you, and I've had to zoom out a bit, and apologies for showing you the off the edges of the paper, because um, this is quite tall. Um, yeah, this was um, made by Home Guard from nineteen. 50 to 56 and it's quite a tricky one because the color of the glass is gray can you see look at it end on it does have a gray look to it and it's got a nice little bit of gilding around the stopper the stopper is also put together like an early one it's it's kind of tricky and not tricky in that and it would have originally had a bit of gilding around there as well, but that's worn off. And it looks like a continental one, and it is, it's Home Guard, so it's from Denmark. Um, but you could imagine it being older. Um, but the giveaways are just the base, there's hardly anywhere on the base. Yeah, there is some, but not anything significant. And there's something. It's too clean, you know. If you look at this stopper, look at how nice that is. It is it doesn't have the surface wear that you'd expect from something that was well used, and it's one of those things that it can trick you. I mean, I bought it because I knew it was a nice thing, regardless. Before I knew who had made it, because I knew. Yeah, this is a good thing. It's got a pontal mark. It looks well put together. And it wasn't too expensive. So, yeah, I bought it before I could figure out what it was. Um, I can't even remember where I bought it from. I, I didn't buy it off, off the internet. Um, yeah, I knew I knew it was a good thing. Um, it's got four rings, which is unusual. For, if it was a Georgian one, it'd be unusual, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, the... Of the ones that I have that are, um, you know, not not the Georgian ones, this is the earliest one because it's from the 50s, definitely. So um, let's, um, I'll, I'll move on and show you the reference for this. So I am back with um, uh, the decanter and illustrated history glass from 1650. And yeah, so here it is here. And you can see it's very distinctly that one has got a pattern number on. And down here it tells you Danish Home Guards Patterns Books, 1950 to 56. So, um, so yeah, um, and I could dig the pattern books out, but I won't because it's here in this book. Um, so there you go for that one. And you can see how close it is to, it kind of looks like it's earlier than some than the ones that, that you're seeing over here. These are all cut and everything, and this is looking like it's trying to be late 18th century but as you can see it's not so moving on a few years um, and time wise with a similar look to the other one that I was showing you this is um, by Stevens and Williams um, from the early 60s and it's still trying to look like a Georgian ship's decanter um, you know with a nice pantal on it this one's got three neck rings. It's got a uh, kind of bullseye. The bullseye is not really, it's not really trying to be Georgian because look at look at the quality of that. Yeah, and the bullseye is not quite right. It's got this big flat piece around it. Now, there were some bullseyes that might have been a bit like that, but most of them, let me actually 
pull something off the shelf behind me. Um, where am I going? Oh, just grab this one. There we go. So, most bullseyes, if I can get, get it to focus, go on, focus on this. There you go. Most bullseyes look like this. And this one, can you see the difference with this big flat piece around here? Um, and yeah, look at the difference. I mean, it's clearly, this is a piece of modern glass. And this is a, and look at all those little nicks and knocks about it. That's what you expect. This is kind of perfect. That, yeah. So yeah, this is still, you know, 60 years old. But yeah, it's very different from something that's 200 plus. So anyway, um, so there you go, this is the uh, Stevens and Williams one. I will show you a reference for that. So the reference I have here is English and Irish Glass by um, Godfrey Wills. And um, here's the decanter we were looking at. And um, yeah, it tells you here, ship's decanter designed by T. Jones, 1963. Made by Stevens and Williams Limited, Briley Hill. So, um, this book's from 1968, uh, and this is in the section on modern glass, and this is why old books are good, because you won't get this reference anywhere else. Um, you might. I think I have seen it somewhere else, but, yeah, in another old book. Um, I don't think I've seen it in any um, modern references books. So, anyway, so there's that, that decanter. So... Um, we've reached 1967 now. Um, this is a Dartings and Crystal ship's decanter. And um, yeah, it's clearly not trying to be like a Georgia one at all. Um, it's a real departure. Um, it, it, it's supposed to be a ship's decanter. Some of them did have this shape here with this flat side. But um, usually it was a bit lower. And then it would have cutting on the edge maybe. But yeah, this is completely plain. Um, the mushroom stopper is not like anything you'd get on a Georgian one. This little thin neck here. Um, let me show you underneath. It has a quite a small pontal mark just there. So um, yeah, it's very elegant actually. And I'll show you the stopper. The way Dartington do their stoppers is very distinctive. This one's actually quite long. Usually they're a little bit, a few centimetres shorter. But yeah, Dartington stoppers are usually a bit shorter. But this little thin neck looks like it could just break off. Um, and yeah, I, I suspect they, they made these for quite a while. Um, and I think they come in grey as well. The grey ones are rarer and um, more valuable. But... Um, yeah, it's a quite quite a decent thing that, and yeah, I got this from a charity shop, and I think I paid about six pounds for it or something like that. And um, this is so the other two that I showed you, the the Home Guard one and the Stevens Williams and one, those are rarer. Uh, you will see more of these, um, and these are the kind of things that you can pick up from charity shops, and they are good things. And, um, yeah, they, their day will come. And um, the, the, even if you're paying a retail price, it's still not a huge amount. But, um, yeah, they are a good thing. If you see one and it's going, you know, in a charity shop, etc., etc., pick it up because um, it deserves being bought. The book I have here is... Um, the um, Decanter, Ancient Tomorrow, Modern by Andy McConnell. This is his more recent book. The other, the Decanter book I was looking at is um, probably, you know, it's over 20 years old. Um, but this is very recent and still in print if you wanted to get a copy from Andy McConnell. And um, yeah, so here is the Dartington one. You also see these ones from time to time. I've never seen one in a charity shop, otherwise it would be mine. But, um, yeah, you see these, and I've seen them in green as well, with this clear stopper. And down here he's telling you about them. So, 1967, Frank Thrower, 
design FT15, which means it's early in his design uh, numbers because um, he went into the hundreds. And, and then next one, to just to the right of it, because it's still under number, number 11, um, 1960 Sweden. He doesn't know who made the other one. Um, he thinks it's from Sweden. Um, so what's nice about this book compared to... So the old book shows you a lot of a lot more Georgian glass, but this book shows you a lot more of um, what's gone on in the 20th century with... Um, ships decanters some of them i wouldn't count the ships i mean i wouldn't count these um m60s i did do a a um video on white fries m60s if you want to see about that and look these up but um yeah i mean i would count that as a, as a ship i wouldn't count that. that's not practical as a ship's decanter it, it would fall over um others uh, i've had one of these um i sold it to someone to a friend and yeah, it's a bit rocky underneath, so I wouldn't count that as a ship's decanter. Yeah, that's a very sad tale. I bought one of these off, off eBay for about £3, and they sent it to me in a jiffy bag, and it didn't survive. Um, yeah, crap like that happens. But, um, yeah, I've got a stopper if anybody wants one. <laughs> so here... Here we go. So you can see that there's a few different styles. I see these around. Um, but yeah, we will move on. I have um, a couple more to show you. Um, one's reference, and I've got two more that I don't have references for. So let's move on. So this one I'm showing you now is um, practically new. I um, saw it on the internet. It was a buy it now. It was very cheap. I just thought. It looks good. It's trying to mimic uh, the Georgian ones. I'll take a punt and um, bought it. It's um, made by Cumbria Crystal uh, up in the northwest of England. Cumbria, strangely enough. And yeah, it's quite cool. Look at this. Yeah. And. Um, with the sort of like mimicking the Georgian stoppers, but it's not, it's got aspects of it that are like Georgian, but that are not. Um, the way the base is cut is quite fancy with the extra, so it's the star cut and then they've got like extra little bits coming off them. So yeah, so this is um, for a modern piece of glass, there's quite a bit of work in this. And, um, yeah, and they're pretty expensive, brand new. Um, they're not in any of my reference books, they're, but brand new, they're, they're pretty expensive. So I will show you uh, their website and you can have a look for yourself. So we're um, looking at the um, Cumbria Crystal website and um, I've just put a little search in for decanters and this is the decanters they have. Um, yeah, and they have, you can see mine is exactly the same shape as this, the cutting is slightly different. They have other patterns here. Um, and more ships, yeah, there's a couple more ship ones here. You can see generally they're the same shape, just with different cuttings on. Um, they haven't done it, I don't think they're doing any exactly like mine now. Um, there's another one, look at that, with a fancy stopper. Um, yeah, there's a shocking thing that I found out when I was looking at this. Let me just go to this one here. And if you hover your mouse over it, the price appears. And it's £527.95, which was a, a real shocker to me. And I knew that they were expensive on eBay. I never realised how much they were retail until I started um, trying to do this video. And um, ooh, yeah, I'm a little surprised. But, um, yeah, that's what it is. So this is the first one I'm going to show you that I don't have a reference for. It's a bit like the Stevens and Williams one. The stopper has a similar feel to it. it does, the stopper has a slightly different shape around the neck here. But it still has this flat piece. So it might be Stevens and Williams, but I don't have any references for it. 
um, and yeah it's like a pancake the bottom is huge and the thing that makes me think it's probably not Stephen Williams is there's no pontal mark yeah it's it's just one huge flat plane um, and it is a beast of a decanter because it's so huge at the base and um, yeah it's got somewhere so I think it's some of the period if you hear it, I don't know if you can hear me if I run my finger around you hear it catching on the glass a little bit so I, I think it probably is um, you know 50 60 years old similar period to the other one but um, I have my doubts that it's Stevens and Williams because it doesn't have a pontal mark and um, and the base is not actually cut flat it's just just very flat so there's that one so I hope you enjoyed that um, dip into my books and um, my decanters and um, yeah in the Andy McConnell book one or the older one he's showing some decanters that are not quite as fat and I could pull some things off my shelf here and go yeah is it, is it? but I could be here for ages doing that so I've gone with yeah it's got a really fat base we're going with that um, so yeah it, they are out there they can be found um, the Cumbria Crystal one I got it for almost nothing uh, it was just a punt I thought it looks decent I'll just have a go on it and that came off eBay and the Dartington one yeah that came out of a, a charity shop so they are out there to be found um, you just have to look at at the cutting is it really soft is it pressed one you know just be be cautious go go for quality ones that ones that feel like quality or are stylish um, you can't go wrong with that if you go with something that's how can I say this yeah just like like an I, I think I'm gonna cut back to a book for a second so the book I'm looking at again is um, Andy McConnell's The Decanter, Ancient to Modern. And um, yeah, so this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. You see them out and about, I see them quite often. And they're, you know, they're not super expensive, but they don't do anything for me stylistically. Um, they are what they are. Usually the, the cutting is really soft. If you look at the ball, it, the facets are really not, you know, they're just soft. Uh, it just... Yeah, maybe I'm being picky, um, but it just doesn't do anything for me. So I would dodge with that. I would rather go for this for the same money or um, something like this, which is clearly, you know, got your 70s look or this one, the 60s, you know, or even one of these, which it looks like it's made for space. Uh, it's, you know, it's my personal taste, but yeah a lot of the 20th century late 20th century cut glass just doesn't do it for me not at all yeah sorry about that i know i'm moaning about stuff you know design and stuff but it's all personal taste so you don't have to take what i say seriously um but anyway what you do have to take seriously is um please like and and subscribe to my my channel yeah do that um yeah and as usual all the references and the, the web link will be in the description below. So I hope you enjoyed this um, and I will be doing more videos like this as well as the other ones. So thank you very much. Bye.